If you guys want to learn how to make this tufted bed, please continue watching. And if you want to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to subscribe. Welcome back, family, friends, and fans. It's Karma Lately. Today we're going to do the tufted bed. I started with this headboard. Now these are my measurements. Um, it's five and a half inches wide and about almost four inches high. I'm sorry, long. Uh, well, yeah, high. You want to refer to your um, to some sort of guide for the scale that you're working on. Typically, from the top of the headboard to the floor, it should be no more than five inches, then five and three eighths of an inch. Now, I'm doing um, half inch corners here. I did I started from the half inch point on all corners and I did uh, about um, an inch like one and seven eighths of an inch and that's where I did all the circles one seven one seven eighth of an inch apart but there are some mistakes you guys just have to see how you want to space out your holes and that's the deal I got my all and I'm po poking through I'm trying to go deep, but not too deep because I don't want the hole to be very big. I just want it to be big enough for what I'm doing. And I'm just doing each hole. Now, some of the video I'm going to be forwarding because this did take a while. I took a two and a half hour video and turned it into 30 minutes so um it was pretty involved but a lot of fun so i got this uh sponge this foam and i'm cutting it to the size of the headboard i could have done just a show and tell and shown you the tufted bed but that's not going to do you any good and i could have done a tutorial that showed you just bits and clips but that's not going to do you any good so i wanted to give you guys a step by step And there are a lot of different tools that you can use. If you don't have this rotary cutter, you can do it with scissors. You can do it with a craft knife. Um, a lot of times it just depends on the mood that I'm in. And sometimes it does depend on the material. I didn't want to work with glue. So I decided to take my very strong basic, um, basic B-A-Z-I-C double-sided tape from my local 99 cent store. It's really strong and I am going to press the foam down. I put two sides, um, two foams on top. I just hot glued all the edges where the holes were not going to be and um, and that's it there is a hole on this one but that's just from a different experiment and so i'm completely ignoring that hole <laughs> now i'm going to poke through with my awl and i'm going to take my my paint pen it's like a paint pen marker my paint pen and i'm going to put little circles around the holes so just as a reference and i'm going to do that to all of them So now all of my circles are completed, but I still didn't feel secure enough. So I went back in with my awl and foam and sponges, they kind of cure the holes a lot faster. So I held the awl there, took out my hole punch screw. It's a really amazing tool you guys should get. And I am just going to start poking bigger holes because I want the sponge, I want the foam part of it to be, um, I want it, I want the hole that's on the sponge to be way bigger than the hole in the paperboard. I 
And what's great about the hole punch screw is that you can put us you can put a hole anywhere you want. There is no limit like what, like when you're using a hole punch. So I'm looking at the headboard and the mattress and I'm feeling like the headboard is the exact same size and I do not want that. I want the headboard to be wider, especially because these paint stirrers that I'm going to be using with the headboard need to have space <clears throat> in between in between the headboard and the popsicle sticks and I'll show you what that looks like. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting this paper board or chipboard as you might say and it's going to be the a height that is acceptable for a headboard from from the height to the ground and that is five and three eighths of an inch and as you can see there's space there in between the popsicle stick which I need now I'm getting foam and I'm covering the popsicle sticks I'm just calling them popsicle sticks I'm cutting them out with my rotary cutter to match it only needs to have foam on one side but now that i think about it i might have i might want to do foam on both sides next time who knows <clears throat> for now this is what i did and now i'm measuring and you can see that the foam comfortably fits in between the the popsicle stick and the headboard and i just used double-sided tape to glue down the um foam onto the popsicle sticks pressed it down and they're ready to go keep in mind those popsicle sticks do have to be cut down i should have cut them down before i put the foam i made a mistake they should be the exact same height of this paperboard i'm also measuring half an inch above the ground from the bottom of the headboard and uh, now I'm placing the top part of the headboard right in the middle. So this line is half an inch above the ground and the from that line to the foam, that is about the width that I'm going to be making the bed rails. And that measures at about one inch, but I did less than that, a little less than an inch. I'm going to be using this um, this size. This is the size of the mattress. I'm going to be using this to help me with the footboard and the two side rails. In retrospect, I should have cut the paperboard, um, the rails, a little bit longer. I let the mattress be the guide, and technically the bed rails should be a little longer uh, and wider than the mattress. So that's just something for you guys to keep in mind. So just to give you guys a great picture. Of so now this is what's happen. going to happen. I am going to take the footboard and the two side rails and they're going to be glued down like that once the fabric is on top of them and the same with these. Now let me show you what I'm gonna be using to tuft the headboard. I'll be using these brads. They are brass brads and at the end, they have two divisions, they have two sections. You open them, they're very pliable, easy to, to work with. And once the fabric is on the foam, I'll be pushing the brads through the hole and then securing, separating the, um, the two sides on the other side, just like I just did. Here is the fabric that I'm using. Now this is a stretch fabric. It's recycled and washed. It used to be uh, someone's party dress, but it started to peel off and um, no one was going to wear that like that. So I decided to recycle it and I knew that there would be a project that would come in for it. So that is what I'm going to be using to tuft. As you can see, using a stretch fabric is just a lot better. This last row of holes I am not going to use because it's just too close for comfort to the above row. 
so i'm just going to be pressing it down with the fabric and that's it i'm not going to use that last row now we just have to make sure we're cutting the fabric so that we have enough on all sides i'm also measuring it with this back part because this is part of the bed rail uh, once the um the fabric is on that soft part it'll be attached to this this fabric that's going to be attached to all of these pieces i'm making sure that the fabric is also even on all sides i kind of eyeballed it but it was about two two inches and change um, on that side i cut this one in half and the two side rails are done this is the footboard which i should have put foam I should have put foam. I should have put foam. You guys, please put foam on your footboard. Now I'm going to secure with safety pins the, um, the fabric so it does not move. And now I'm going to start with the brads. So for the first one, what I did was I checked to see where the hole was, I felt for it with my thumb, and then I pushed the brad through the hole. But I wanted to find something a little more simple and a little less guessing. There you see the brad, divide it, and it's secure. But for the next ones, I decided to do something different. I decided to poke through the back instead and let it pierce through the fabric. It would leave a mark on the fabric. And now I'm not guessing where that hole is and now I'm going to put the brad right through. Pressing it down as far as you can go and then dividing the brad on the back of the paperboard. I'm going to do it one more time before I speed up the entire process, but I'm going to show you how I did each and every single brad. Sped up, of course. So one more time, I'm going to take the brad through the back hole, pushing it through the fabric, letting it pierce the fabric, indicating to me where the hole is, I slide the brad through the fabric, through the hole of the paperboard, press down hard, and then divide the brad on the other end. And I've never seen this done uh, anywhere online or anything. If it has been done, that's awesome. Just know that I decided to come up with this idea. I was trying to figure out what would be the most secure way to do this. Uh, and this is what I came up with. I made some slits um, right at the right at the center of each hole. I made some slits. I'm hoping that it'll give a little bit of an indentation once I tighten the fabric around it. So I'm just dropping my safety pins down. By the way, the brads are from the brand Recollections. I have quite a few things from Recollections, especially like scrap paper. And um, Yes, yeah, so I kept the fabric secure with the safety pins. I just dropped them down further below so that I can keep working freely. And I'm just going to take out as many brads as possible so that I don't have to keep opening and closing the package. I also did the slits on the bottom and as you can see I left those holes at the bottom alone. I am not putting brads through them because I felt they were too close to the above row. 
Now I'm going to place the headboard like we did before. I'm going to uh, put the double-sided tape on the back and place it right in the middle. So we're leaving about a quarter of an inch on each side and we're putting the this part of the headboard onto the back part of the headboard right in the middle as flush as possible. I actually regret that I didn't have some sort of foam right on top just to give it a nice curvy top. Next time I will definitely, this is the first time I'm doing this kind of bed. And so next time I'm definitely gonna take away a couple of things before I um, complete the project. So these slits were meant to make those little indentations, which it did do, but I decided that I wanted to make some folds. And so I'm creating my own folds. And like I've said before, it just takes a little bit more effort to do certain things on a small, tiny object, a big, humongous headboard. The easiest thing would be to make these folds. Um, but doing it on a small bed is just a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> so I was able to do the um, folds on the side. I worked, I started from the middle and worked my way out and then I'll work on the other side. So once I have the fold the way that I want, I'm then going to take my glue gun and secure it down. And I like to hold it, and then once I know that the glue is almost cooling off, that's when I press down and really give it a nice press. So I was happy with that. Now we're going to work on the other side. Now this part here has a little bit of a tear, and that, that just happened from me poking it with the brad a couple of times. Uh, so you want to be careful, especially with this kind of this kind of fabric. There are certain stretch fabrics that are more durable than others, and this one it did tear after me poking it through with the brad. So I think I'm just what I so what I am going to do is take my glue gun. I put a little bit on this uh, long needle, and um, it had a lot, so I just kind of wiped off a little bit. And then I put it right under the fold so I could secure the fold and hide the hole. The only problem is that then the hot glue, it kind of shows and then it once it dries, it turns white. So I had to like cut it off. So there's always something that's like going to be... <laughs> Um, next time I hope to get as close to perfection as possible, but yeah. So I'm going to keep on making these folds right on the top. And we're going to do the same thing to this side. Once you have the top fold secure, you're going to then uh, pull it down and glue. I feel good about this except for this little piece here. I didn't want that to show but I had to cover the hole so that's good. Um, now I'm going to work on the sides and then I'll do the bottom. I'm just going to do a simple stretch not too taut because I want to be able to squeeze this into this pocket so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this
it almost looks like leather with the shine. Um, I'm really happy with it. There's always a mistake or two, but I'm happy with it overall. So now I'm going to get to covering everything with its respective fabric. Now remember I had said these popsicle sticks should have been cut with a pencil, but I'm cutting them now. And um, I was able to wrap them nicely. And then I was thinking for the other side, I had this scrap paper, this uh, scrapbook paper that um, I thought matched the fabric really nicely. And I'm gonna show it to you guys. So I kind of measured it and then made it a little bit smaller and wanted to put that on the back. I should have stopped there, but um, I didn't. So I put double-sided tape on the paper and peeled it off. And whenever you have excess double-sided tape, just fold it back onto the tape itself. Now, once I put this on here and I pressed it down, I didn't like the edges. I felt that the edges looked too raw, so I decided that I wanted to do some piping. I'll show you guys right now. So you see the sides, it just didn't look good to me. So I wanted to do some piping. I decided to get a bright idea, grab the fabric. When I pulled it, it didn't pull on the gold side. It pulled on the inner lining, which is like the purple side. And it was just a mess. So I put it on the sides with um, hot glue, but I assure you it did not turn out the way that I wanted to and it actually made it look more messy so I regret that part that's I think my biggest regret in the entire project was trying to put this piping that really did not work out don't do what I just did if you're gonna put piping get actual piping or actual ribbon don't try to make your own piping this is not cute You see all the details a lot more clearly on a miniature piece. So that's why you have to be careful. So this is where I'm going to place it. As you can see, the um, the side popsicle sticks, those sides look, um, they're the same height as the headboard now. And then I just took some black felt for the back of the uh, headboard. I didn't want it to be the same color of the fabric and I wanted it to be something that had some texture onto it so that it would hide the folds underneath. Then I put glue and pressed down and now we're gonna do the bed rails. I really should have, that's the footboard, I really should have put foam on the footboard because later on you'll see why I put brads on it and it would have just looked better with the foam. So I'm using the actual cutting mat to show me clear and even lines and I'm going to be putting the brads in, um, in line with the lines on the cutting mat. Uh, I'm actually, I couldn't find my awl at this point, so I, I just decided to use my long needle to make all the holes. And I stuck it through. And now I'm just putting the brads, but it would have looked so much better if the foam was on here. Now I'm placing the side bed rail right under the foam of the headboard 
So it's leaving the bottom of the rail at half an inch off the floor. I connect the footboard. And now I'm just adding these popsicle sticks. Um, they just have the ends cut off. And I'm adding these pops popsicle sticks all along the bed. I also found these two beads that were a little beaten up. I decided to get some pigment paint and pearlized powder pigment and um, give a little more life to the balls and have them match the color of the headboard. Then the whole point is to glue it underneath so that that can hold up the bed rail. I also put a little bit of a, a gloss medium on the um, beads just to protect some of the pigment. I also put some more pigment on top of the gloss and now I have to wash my hands. I'm adding one uh, wooden stick. It's about the size of a, of a coffee stir, but it's not a coffee stir. And I'm adding, kind of going all over the place, just getting everything done. I was waiting for these beads to um, dry and now I'm placing them underneath the corners. It's a little tilted. It is, it's tilted. I didn't fix it. I decided to take some gold um, marker and cover the glue. And now, like I was saying, I'm applying the popsicle sticks. I really didn't have it measured out, so I could have done a better job of aligning them all evenly and spacing them out, but I didn't do that. So just take that into account for you guys. Uh, if you want it to come out perfectly even. Now the mattress will forever be secure. So I did not put the bedding on the mattress, nor did I put any of the pillows or anything like that. Number one, I had to use a different mattress, not the one that I originally intended to use. And number two, I want to still do uh, more bedding for this bed. I want to do the duvet. I want to do some more pillow shams, some accent pieces, uh, some curtains maybe a rug. So there's still a couple of things that I want to do for the bed. So I decided to just show you guys the bed nice and bare. And so this is what it turned out to be guys. <laughs>